I would go away and I would lie in my bed and I wouldn't sleep. I'd be, if we had an editorial meeting, I'd spend the whole night playing this thing in my head and I wouldn't get much sleep. Mm. You would go out partying, talk <laughs> to people, play it in your own head in conversations with different That's people. True. And we'd come back and in different ways, we would have decided to rewrite Extra. what we had been forced into in editorial meetings in our own ways of engaging with the world. We would come back and there would be the conversation between us. And then, the, you know, That's so true. there were these different ways. So we kind of also brought kind of the esoteric and the practical between us. We kind of merged the two, the theoretical and the real were always kind of merged. What they wanted was a magazine that... There was a club if, magazine. If you, exactly. So if there's music playing on why... It should be reflected artist, in the magazine. What we should do is that we should take that artist, we should have a picture of him, yeah. uh, we should have 50 words on, on who he is and, and he why is. he's good. A review of the album and then repeat that for every artist afterwards. Basically, they got completely and utterly shocked when we produced Articles of 3,000 words. <laughs> we weren't interested in any kind of formulas. What we wanted was life. Yeah. We wanted this thing to be organic. It couldn't be around what works for magazines. It had to be around what sounds like a good story, what sounds interesting, exactly. what sounds real, and let it go its own way. Exactly. And one of the things that they did, at some point they tried to, sh we went into a workshop where they showed us what formulas work for a magazine. <laughs> and for example, they showed us this thing about how the reason Cosmo sells is that it always has the words free, <laughs> sex, what else? The win, things free. that always work on a cover are free, are sex, sex and, and about winning. So they said, that's what we need to do. They so said, I said like, okay, fine. So we so said, we're going to do it. Fine, we'll do it. <laughs> so we did a cover. We said, win, free, sex. And we said, page 95. Mm. And when you went to page 95, what we ordered the art director to do was to do a montage, a prestige, essentially, of nothing. Of, and, of lines. But in between, <laughs> in between, in cutout, what was written on this double page spread was, come on, you didn't, re you, you should know us better than that. Or something along those lines. <laughs> so well, well, let's start, let's start at the beginning. Okay, let's what happened beginning. was that like, I then had lots of drugs one night, rode off my car and ran away to Soweto. Yes, to it go, all happened in that order. <laughs> <laughs> to go recover. <laughs> And, all and as room. I was recovering, you called me and you said, oh, you know, actually this magazine thing is taking off. There's a workshop and you must come. So I reluctantly agreed to come. And we had a meeting at this, at this point. It was the publishers of SL and Y. The publishers of SL had made a proposal to Y about putting a magazine together. And that at the time, the black we, equivalent of yeah, SL. We hadn't thought of a team at the time. We were there to just brainstorm the idea and the concept. But what were we trying to achieve doing exactly what was it what was for you what was it see my i mean i suppose the only game that i i thought we were playing was a game of what do we think black youth need to be reading and specifically black youth at that time and what do we and why do we think that kind of like south african popular culture lacks what do we think why do we think are the critical voices that don't exist, or the critical writing that doesn't exist, or the critical imaging that doesn't exist? Mm. You say we wanted to do, <laughs> we, we, what we were thinking is what should black youth be reading? And in a sense, yes. But it was also about something higher than that. For example, when we decided, when I decided we were going to review a science fiction book. Mm. Now, on, one, on the one hand, it was radical in the sense, and as, as Stephanie pointed out, is that Jesus, somebody in South Africa is doing a... Uh, a youth culture magazine and they're reviewing science fiction and there's this idea that black kids don't read much less science fiction right mm. and that in itself would seem radical but actually cock man i actually think reviewing any kind of science fiction in south africa in a magazine aimed at youth is radical and for me it was always about that thing is that how in an notionally it's about being radical with black youth but actually Actually, it was about being radical fucking period. And True. for me, all we really did was like a time warp, you know. All we did was, there were magazines that are radical that came up in a particular time. But South Africa, because of its own particular kind of context, had a new emergent youth who had never gone through sort of the radicalization of pop culture. Indeed. I think that was the thing. That's what I wanted, yeah. All we did was basically see that and in a time when consumerism and commercialism was rife and everybody just wanted these black kids to buy into that absolutely we kind of thought hang on actually what's interesting about it is that no one's given these kids kind of the radical era that other 
kids Absolutely. have gone through in to other places in the world. Absolutely. So we'd had this kind of revolution with YFM and Kwaito was all of a sudden on the airwaves. We'd had, fuck, we'd, we'd had, we'd had Brenda Fassi forever. We'd had like Sipa Hostics forever. We'd had, we'd had black musicians who'd been on air, on TV, on records, touring the world for a long, long time. But we'd never ever had anybody who wrote about them like they mattered. Like they meant something. <laughs> like what they were doing was part of a bigger social Imagining. <laughs> Essentially, hey. it was like, for me, the, the profoundest moments was when I could almost hear the reader at the other end of the article going, yes, I thought so. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I thought that's exactly, exactly what is going on here. Exactly. This is what, I've never been a traditional lefty, because one of the things I believe in, for example, is that one of the mistakes that the left makes is that they think that they own intellectualism. They are so wrong. Some of the most, in, some of the most brightest. In fact, the right has been responsible for much of the intellectualism of the last century which is why which is why capitalism reigns supreme in fact it's a, it's, it's a global crisis more and more young people who grow up and come into their own find me and stop me and they say and ask the question that was really special why, uh, and ask the question why don't you go back why don't, exactly your microphone exactly. was burning <laughs> your microphone is burnt oh fuck yeah Ooh, I even <laughs> burnt myself on it Shit. Shit.